Hey there, and welcome back to XCOM 2. My name is Pete, and today we complete another episode of our Legend Iron Man walkthrough of XCOM 2 War of the Chosen. Last time we left off after a successful supply raid mission that did however not go without a small surprise, somehow though Ranger Hussar Sobieski dodged a flamethrower, and we extracted 10 of the 12 supply crates from the mission site. Coincidentally then, today we are in for yet another supply raid. The first one was given to us as a rumor reward, this one here then is a regular appearance. We are also facing the high explosive sitrep, and I have a feeling that this could make the mission a little bit easier. Setting course for Eastern Europe. As a result, our squad then once again features Reaper Dragonova. I think with explosives on the map we just have to bring her. The entire squad is also decked out in the brand new Predator armor, resulting in 4 extra hit points for everyone, as well as an extra item slot. Since we collected enough alien alloys last time out, let us now also finally purchase the Gauss rifle, so that our sharpshooters finally have access to magnetic weapons too. For the Tempest Gauntlets or the Gremlin Mark II then however, we are lacking additional alloys. Hopefully though, today's mission can fix that. We do have a good amount of supplies though, and extra item slots too, so let's make ourselves a medkit here, after all we can't always expect people to dodge out of the way. That medkit will then go on healer specialist Trominion, and you can also see here the downside of that extra item slot, because unfortunately it cannot be used to simply carry additional grenades. So over the course of the next few episodes we will likely stock up on these utility items, like medkits, battle scanners, etc. For now though the medkit will suffice, a battle scanner is not really necessary with a reaper in the squad. Finally then, now that she has the Gauss rifle, let's also quickly slap an autoloader on Sapphire West's weapon. So now, at least once per mission, she can reload for free and still shoot afterwards. And that's it, out we go then, on supply raid number 2. Ranger deployed. We're in the pipe. Five by five. The resistance raided an advent convoy that was passing through this area, and they managed to disable one of the transports for us to pick clean. Hostile reinforcements are sure to be moving on the area, but we're heading in to secure the site. Neutralize any hostile contacts and grab whatever you can. Menace 1-5. The disabled advent convoy is just ahead. Engage and eliminate all hostile forces. Remember, Commander, there are extremely volatile materials scattered throughout this area. We need to make sure our troops are clear of any possible explosions. Right, so the mission setup a little different this time around. This here is not the type of supply raid where we engage in a battle of marking crates. Instead, there are several stationary supply crates all over the map and we just need to take out enemies without destroying them. Sounds simple enough, but keep in mind the map is also littered with explosives, so depending on their placement, this could make things a bit tricky. I go where you tell me. The target is marked. The invaders send a patrol. For now though, Dragonova can scout ahead and immediately detects not one but two groups of enemies. We have here a Viper and a Stun Lance on the left, that would be part number one, as well as a Purifier, Shield Bearer and Officer on the right, that would be part number two. I go where I, I have sight beyond vision. You may have also noticed a bit more armor on our enemies than usual. That is because of the alloy padding dark event that went into effect last episode. So for one month we will see a little bit more of this. But of course explosives are a great way to deal with armor. And even though we could blow up the truck here right away, we won't do that just yet. There might be some valuable crates on the back of it that would get destroyed this way. So for now let's just bring everyone a bit closer and use concealment to our advantage to stay hidden. Right, so we have movement, the advent part is heading over to the left side, and conveniently comes to a halt not too far away from a red explosive barrel. For a split second then, we also have a double viper muton part appear in the shadows, and while they vanish as quickly as they appeared, we now have intel on three of what I expect to be four enemy groups on this mission. Viper and Stun Lancer, meanwhile, are moving forwards, but not far enough to detect us. Getting close here. Instead, they too choose a red explosive barrel as their stopping point. Ranger Warhawk then also screams as if he was on fire, but don't worry, despite the flames looking close here, he's just fine. Now, back to our enemies, and I have to say, they are serving themselves on a silver platter for us here. The fact that the Advent group even includes a purifier is a lovely coincidence, and so I think Dragonova will get to have some fun here early on. 
Now, just shooting the barrels would do 6 points of damage in a comparatively small radius. However, if we use remote start, the damage is doubled to 12 points and the radius is also slightly expanded. And all of that should be enough to take out this first group here, nice and silently, I guess. Seize any advantage. Yes, even the officer with 13 hit points did just die because the purifier blew up. Meanwhile, Viper and Stun Lancer have seemingly not noticed anything. And just like that, we are one tough enemy group down, with most likely three more to go. And I think we can make that two rather easily here, despite the fact that neither Twitchy nor Alyssa can move. Overwatch. So let's put Twitchy and Shuminian on Overwatch. Roger. I've got my eyes on. And then we can use Alyssa's Lightning Hands ability to blow up the barrel right in front of her. As you can see, both her and Twitchy are thankfully just outside of the explosion radius. Now of course, this activates the pod, but we planned ahead for that. Happy now? Before you get too close. Right, lovely. Both of our reaction shots find their target, and with that, we are two enemy groups down already. And we even have some loot to recover, so let's use the fact that Sapphire can still move to grab that. I'm on it. Expanded magazine and a focus PCS. Not the most useful items, but we'll gladly take them. Target asset located. Meanwhile, with Muton and Viper still lurking in the shadows, the rest of our squad will just shuffle around a bit. I hope it's worth it. For now, we'll go on Overwatch, and then we'll continue scouting next turn. I'm on it! Scanning! Two to get to the heat. Crisp. Right, so here we are with more completely unfounded screaming because of fire that is not actually touching anyone. Looking ahead, we then just barely see one of the Vipers in the shadows, so let's send out our Reaper to get a better look. I go where I'm needed. I have sight beyond vision. Right, so here they are in the flesh, Viper, Viper and Muton. Once again, standing next to a potentially explosive truck, but also next to some glowing crates on the left here. Either way, for now, let's just keep our distance and once again lay low. Our squad is revealed after all, so ideally we let the enemies come to us. Unfortunately though, it looks like they have other plans, as their patrol route takes them over to the left side of the map here. But to our advantage, the mission does not really have any sort of timer. Out. So as long as we don't destroy any crates, we can basically take as long as we want. I know where you are. Another one of Dragonova's scouting trips then reveals the fourth enemy group, two Vipers and a Spectre. The latter may have just been visible for a few seconds here. But the benefit of recording all of this is that I can take a closer look at the footage, so that we now know exactly what we're dealing with. Still, for now, let's focus on the group that we know is actually moving. And because they are, we won't do much here. Instead, we'll just remain patient and on Overwatch. Affirmative, covering now. On Overwatch. Right, and it looks like we're finally making contact here. Okay, so not quite the Overwatch ambush I had hoped for. Sapphire and Twitchy, the only ones whose reaction shots actually triggered, and with Twitchy then unfortunately missing hers, we don't really do a whole lot of damage here. Still, we once again have some explosives conveniently nearby to our enemies. As a matter of fact, we have one on the truck here that we can shoot with our Templar Logan, and it is in fact so perfectly placed that it will hit both of the Vipers without touching any of the supply crates on its sides. And there we go, both Vipers down to 4 hit points, meanwhile both supply crates are still intact and not burning either. And we can in fact follow that up with yet another explosion, as the Muton here is standing awfully close to a barrel. Right, Muton completely exposed and down to 1 hit point, at this point I think we should be able to clean things up nicely. 
And we'll start things off with Twitchy, who has a medium to high percentage shot against the Muton here. Let's see if she can hit it this time. Shot fail to connect. Okay, unfortunately she can't, so the next move is Miss West. 87% is hopefully enough to get the kill here. And it is, and that means the fight is basically already over. The other two are guaranteed kills. The first one, a melee slash attack from Ranger Warhawk. The second, a flagging stealth kill from Reaper Dragonova. Remember, they are not. I need more ammo. As always, she remains undetected, and with our enemy seemingly not moving on that turn, we can keep scouting on ours right away. I will reposition. You cannot run. And that paints a rather interesting picture, with the Spectre a good distance away from the Vipers, while the Vipers are essentially intertwined standing on the same tile here. But I'm sure that will resolve itself as soon as we reveal our troops. For now though, let's not do that just yet. Instead, we can move over to that building on the left side here to potentially get ourselves some high ground on the next turn. And we will, of course, as always, finish the turn on a couple of overwatches, just in case our enemies make a move. Overwatch, got it covered. Get a little toasty here! Once again then, Warhawk and Sapphire screaming against the non-existent flames. Our enemies, meanwhile, have remained exactly where they were, which also now means that we can't really move any closer without revealing ourselves. So instead, let's go on the offensive now. After all, Dragonova still has her claymore, and so let's put an end to the Viper's entanglement. Placing explosive. And of course, the explosive here is placed in a way that will not hurt any of the supply crates. Ammunition. Right, so at this point our enemies are moving and actually setting up one or two overwatches might have been a good idea. On the other hand, those could have also gone against the Spectre, leaving the two injured Vipers standing still. Despite the Spectre's full hit points though, this looks like a very manageable situation. As I had hoped, we can even get some high ground with our sharpshooter. On your order. But before Alyssa pulls the trigger, Templar Logan can first kill off one of the Vipers. Down. Then it's time for Sapphire West to use her Lightning Hands ability and we'll go for the kill first. And that succeeds, so she can now use her regular shot against the Spectre. Three points of damage, not a lot, but it's something. Up next then, Schwaminian can take aim, this time wielding the Assault Rifle instead of the Bolt Caster. Scratched the Spectre dodges, but still suffers a further 3 points of damage, and so I think Ranger Warhawk should be able to finish this swiftly, first by throwing the Hunter's Axe, and then by dealing the final blow from up close. One down, thousands to go. All hostiles are down and the area is secure. Status confirmed. Mission accomplished. And there we are. Seven turns, a lot of explosions and the mission is over. Dragonova will most likely once again take MVP for this one, so perhaps we'll have to continue the Reaper Less poll for another week. Either way, this was a fun little mission and an easy way to grab what will hopefully be some useful loot. Tell them to pose near an Advent burger menu. For science, of course. According to Advent officials, recent attacks by dissident elements operating outside of the city centers have done little to slow the progress of Advent's ongoing development or outreach programs. Voluntary citizen emigration numbers are reportedly at their highest level in recent years. I told the troops to expect the best, and that's what you've shown them, Commander. Well done. 
Right, no promotions whatsoever this time, which means we can skip right ahead to the loot section, which not only lists the two items that we grabbed from the Stun Lancer earlier, but also another healthy influx of alloys, Illyrium crystals, supplies and even another Illyrium core. Unfortunately, apart from that, no further PCS or weapon attachments are gained, but I think for the time being we can live with that. Now, at this point, we still have some time, so I would say let's continue scanning, and we will continue doing so at the Skirmisher HQ. Like I said last time, building that proving ground is becoming more and more of a priority. First of all, though, we are presented with another rumor. This one would cut the intel costs for making contact with a new region in half, and while that sounds good on paper, we actually have enough intel right now to make contact with three new regions immediately, not to mention that we also still have two research projects from which we could gain more. So I don't think it's necessary to waste seven days on this. Instead, let's fly back to the skirmishes. Avenger plotting new course. getting themselves into when they joined up with your resistance. The Elders don't have mercy to spare for anyone. Right, and we suffer another chosen retribution at the hands of the Hunter. Unfortunate, yes, but far from the end of the world. The Chosen are gonna do whatever it takes to get to you, Commander. Even if that means wiping out entire camps of resistance supporters. We're their only line of defense. Our actions have succeeded, and the Elders grow fearful. Okay, some good news for a change. We have completed a covert action, and we have helped ourselves to another engineer. We can also see that Ranger Helleborus has received a promotion and a one-point mobility increase, but the character we want to focus on right now is Dr. Dylan Schmidt, nicknamed Krunknux, submitted, just like any other character in this series, by a lovely patron supporter, this time the one with the same name. Born in the United States, word circulating among the troops is that Dylan was actually a convict being held in the United States until recently. Since his release, he's developed a grisly reputation for collecting trophies off of enemy combatants. Now, down in engineering, I'm afraid there won't be that much trophy collecting for him, but considering that we are trying to speed up some of our construction and excavation projects, he will most likely still be a valuable addition. For now though, as we are once again reminded of Helleborus's promotion, we have to choose our next covert action. And you can see it on the left side here, the list is quite long. And there are quite a few interesting missions here that intrigue me. However, there is one that I think we should grab above all others, and that would be this one here, for a free resistance contact. As you know, resistance contacts are extremely valuable, and ultimately they will be the limiting factor deciding how quickly we can fight against the Avatar project, and completing this would also allow us to make contact with the region needed for the next plot mission, so all in all I think this is the best course of action. With another mobility reward being offered, we will then assign Ranger Warhog, who already has a stunning mobility of 15, and he will be accompanied by Grenadier Echo Dr. S. Sierra. Considering that both Twitchy and Nicholas are currently tired, I think getting some experience for a third Grenadier might make some sense. Obviously, we will also assign the supplies to avoid anyone getting captured, and in just six days we can then finally make contact with yet another region. In the meantime, let's hop over to the armory and level up Helleborus. The build that I have in mind for him is that of a pure shotgunner, and for that I think Shadow Step is a good choice at the sergeant level, although at the moment it doesn't really benefit his shotgunning skills directly. Still, as he advances through the ranks, we will find some synergy between this and the other skills he will unlock. For now though, let us also now assign our latest engineering acquisition, as Krunknux Schmidt will help out Ophelia Morningstar in the excavation process here, immediately reducing the time left from 40 down to 20 days. And with our power relay finished in only two days, I would say let's continue scanning. Maybe we'll even get all the way to building a proving ground today. Power relay now operational. And there we go, another relay is up and running, providing us with three extra power. For the moment though, that alone does not really get us anything. Instead, we'll have to wait just three more days until our next building space is cleared. And of course, before that happens, we have a supply drop coming up. Got an urgent communication coming in for you now, Commander. I had high hopes for the resistance under your leadership, Commander. And you have outdone yourself. Right, so looks like the Council is once again pretty happy with us. I think the Avatar project has actually not made any progress this month, so it looks like we are slowly at least drawing equal with our adversaries. 
Speaking of which, both Assassin and Hunter are of course still gaining on us. The Assassin for now just planning another retribution that we should be easily able to handle. The Hunter meanwhile preparing for the next sabotage, which could be quite a bit worse. Still, nothing we can do about either one of them for the time being, so let's continue with Dark Events, where up first we have Barrier, already familiar from the last month, and once again not particularly threatening, as we're not really facing too many tech and psionic defenses in the first place. The new construction event, meanwhile, would directly benefit the Avatar project, and depending on what the hidden event is, this one might be one to counter, just to remain in control of the timeline. That hidden event then, meanwhile, translating to enemy reinforcements on all Gorilla Ops for the next month, which is of course annoying and potentially dangerous, however, there are also only going to be one or two of those Gorilla Ops within that time frame, so I'm not entirely sure whether or not we absolutely need to counter this. Let me know in the comments down below which one you think is most dangerous. Our next chance to counter them is coming up shortly, I think. Moving on then, we have resistance orders and we're actually making a slight change here. Since we don't really find ourselves scanning reward rumors all that often lately, we'll change this one out and we'll replace it with popular support, increasing our financial yield from supply drops. Let's hope this doesn't come back to bite us, the rest meanwhile stays as it is. Consider it done, Commander. Our supply drop meanwhile holding 743 supplies for us, and yes, we'll grab those eventually. For now though, let's keep scanning. And there we are, we have cleared out some alien machinery, and not only does this mean that we now have a new room available, we have also gained ourselves even more supplies and alloys. And I think we can't really postpone it any longer, let's finally build ourselves a proving ground. Not only do we need this facility to further the game's main plotline, but it will also be our main source of utility items, so it makes some sense to build it now that we can use a few more of those. Commander, we've pushed our current power systems to the limit. We don't have any capacity to spare, which means we can't expand our facilities further. And yes, we will of course assign an engineer to help speed up the building process. Baron von H now takes care of that, reducing construction time down to 10 days. Still, we did have two engineers working on the excavation side, so we have one to spare, and so Ophelia Morningstar and Dylan Schmidt are now joined by Isaac Schmidt, and with the three of them working together, clearing this next building space will only take us 11 more days. And I think, with another month behind us and the proving ground finally underway, we have reached a good point to make the cut for today. Again, let me know which one of the dark events you think we should counter. It is not unlikely that our next mission will indeed be another Gorilla Ops. So stay tuned for that, and of course, as always, if you enjoyed today's episode, then I would be very happy if you could leave a thumbs up. And if you like what I'm doing and want to support me and my channel further, then you can go ahead and subscribe to stay up to date, grab some merch over on shop.peatcomplete.com, or check out and maybe even pledge to the Pete Complete Patreon. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.